Good morning to you. This is third segment of the lecture on how to write proposals in social sciences. One of the most important aspect is how do I search for the topics or the subject topics which I have identified within my uh, within my ambit. Now one of the great tools which I always refer to my students is semantic scholar that watching. It is an artificial intelligence enabled tool which provides you a lot of information. For example, it will give you how recent or you are or you are uh, I mean you have found out an article you will see for the past three years how many authors referred this particular article. You will also get a PDF on the topic which will be available for you in the left hand side of the website. Probably I will give you a complete video on how to use semantic scholar dot for your research. Now this should be in addition to Google Scholar and most of the articles needed by you may be available there. And Microsoft also publishes a similar kind of a tool which research Microsoft is the website and you can definitely these three repositories should be able to give you a feel of research that is happening already in your area of research and they are classified by various matrices so that you will have a feel of the seminal articles in your area that means they are published before 20 to 30 years even 50 years some of the great sociologists and anthropologists they have published their own work by way of field field studies and other areas and which you can really get a feel of the entire topic in these areas and another source which i feel you should use is world cat world cat c a t c a t is catalog dot watch i think this is one of the finest tool uh, which has membership of almost all the universities in the world and you will find enormous kind of artificial intelligence tools to help you to come to understand uh, what exactly is your topic in the scheme of things therefore you know what is the first article that is published semantic scholar will give you the first article is published in 1951 and then it will show you every year how many articles are being published by way of a graph you can click on to each one of them then you can know how burning the topic is for example if the number of papers are increasing to the extent of 20 40 50 thousand by year 2020 you might be wondering what exactly in 2020 so many papers published even advanced papers are also being shown there therefore you get data from the semantics column go to work cat.organization in order to know the different kind of resources in different libraries all textbooks series then monographs 
everything is available on the topic will be available there in workcat.org. Now, this kind of a fortification of yourself with the literature review will empower you to a large extent you grow in confidence in your topic. One question is, is your topic still relevant? The answer is yes, because if we can show the graph that how many papers are published in your area, then you can definitely show them that the recency of your research work and importance of the research work. Therefore, this is one of the very important tools that you can use. Now, next one. In the word cat also, you will get, for example, you have identified one of the author, Metron, and then you put Metron over here. Then it will show you who are all the people who have influenced Metron, or here they have told. Agatha Christie, Sean Agatha Christie, and who are all the people who have influenced Agatha Christie and people who are influenced by her. By looking at the map, you clearly know who all Agatha Christie has referred in her words. And who are all the people who have researchers who are who used Agatha Christie's ideas. Similarly, you can keep a map and what you put yourself in the middle and then what are all the people who, are, who have influenced you to write this proposal and then say that probably more number of researchers in which areas are likely to cite your papers. For this, you have to clearly know the likely journals which are going to publish your topic. Therefore, while doing your literature review, you identify those topics and those authors. And many a times, I have seen in my own experience that 60% of the authors will positively reply for you unless he is very busy by way of sharing his work. And if you send your abstract and some of the research methodology you are going to use, they'll be very glad to offer their own work to be cited by you. You know very well that you have to, you can maximum take 49 words from anybody without, within quotes, or else if you go beyond 49 words, you have to necessarily take his permission. But always better to write them that you are going to use his or her work in your proposal or work. Sometimes you can request them to be part of the research program. Some of the senior most authors will be very glad to join with you and which adds value to your proposal. Can you imagine somebody like Abhijit Banerjee, sir, Professor Abhijit Banerjee joining with you in order to write your paper? Uh, some of the researchers did succeed by writing directly to them, by reading their work and by. It is constant, it is great hard work. But with the help of the tools available, you can make more effective. Now, one other question that generally comes to the mind of this project proposal writing is how many objectives I can have? See, the objective should not be, you know, breaking down them into smaller, smaller, smaller segments, finding out demographic characteristics, finding, uh, finding uh, uh, social characteristics, and then just clearly given one single sentence, demographic, social, all the other cap in one single sentence. Every objective should have a clear deliverable. In your method, it should re it get reflected 
and it should reflect in your results and in your discussion. Therefore, you have to be very clear in clear in defining your objectives. And you cannot have more than three to four objectives. It is better to restrict to three to four so that you will be more focused on those areas. If you have a large number of objectives, you will lose focus. If you have only short, very one objective, I think it may it may become a, simple, a paper for publication rather than to be a research for which you require funding. Therefore, the people who are giving you fund or very busy professors and especially in ISSR, ICSSR, you will have senior professors coming there. Therefore, you have to be very clear about what broad subject area under which you are coming. In economics, then developmental economics. Then you have this classification. Once you have the classification very clear, take the help of the librarian in your college. He will help you how to identify the classification. Or you can definitely go through the web in order to find out uh, the various classifications that are available for economic economic topics. Therefore, like that, you have topics that are classified under various subjects. You have to be very clear under what area it is coming, and uh, you have to be very specific in that, so that when you send your proposal and they are the first, there is one filtration. And then it will be sent to a committee, and the committee consists of experts. They will give their comments. It is a journey, and sometimes you go for go for uh, your your proposal presentation. The comments given by you will help you to a large extent to prepare another proposal. And the same proposal you refine, and then do it for the other organization or for other funding. You can't expect funding for the first time for oh, this uh, it is a continuous process rather than a one single kind of an activity therefore objectives try to keep them within the limits and next thing is what framework should i choose this is very important in your research design and Creswell, 2007, he has written an extraordinary book on research design. I wish all of you to go through that. See, what is your world view you have to give in your methodological part? The world view means a set of beliefs that guide the action for you. There are what beliefs that guides you to do the research? Uh, let me give you, there are four major views, post-positivistic worldview, constructivism, advocacy, participatory and pragmatism. Now advocacy and participatory, let me take the third one. In this, you think that people need to be supported you have to advocate. For example, you are studying on the migrant workers. Your view is, I have to advocate their position. Rather than just merely, therefore they have all their constructed world. The different kind of migratory workers have different worlds for themselves. Therefore, this is one of the important dimensions that drives you, whether you have to do qualitative or quantitative research or mixed methods. Probably in the future lectures, I will be able to throw some light on these areas for you to do an effective research. And sample size determination is also in a very important thing, uh, which a future lectures I will give you. And thank you very much. And you may post your questions. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much.